Well, it's, it's a pleasure to be here today. This is uh, my first sermon um, for the church. You know, I'm, a, I'm an expert uh, preacher in the shower. I do so well. I've converted just about everybody in there. Um, <laughs> but uh, this, is, this is my first public one. Uh, it, it's kind of fun following um, Brother Bartholomew because his first, his first one was two weeks ago. And when I heard what his sermon was, I, I hung my head. That's what I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then last week, Brother Ikone's preached, and then that was my backup. <laughs> so so we're, we, we've got something here. Um, we're going to try to go with it. You know, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you in on a little, a little caveatic secret of, of some of my speeches. I took, a, I took a public speaking class while I was in um, college, and we have five speeches. I got an A on three of those speeches, and then on two of those speeches, I got a C. Uh, the three speeches that I got the A on are the ones that I prepared for five minutes before class. <laughs> the two I got the C on, I spent about a week on each of those. So it seems to be that over-preparation does not favor me, and I spent some amount of time on this. We'll see if it was too much or too little, right? <laughs> uh, bow your heads with me for a second while I, uh, while, I, while I welcome the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, uh, I thank you that I could come up here today uh, to share your word and who you are with uh, my church family, uh, my family in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, my, brother, my, my brothers, my sister, my uh, mother and father, my son and my wife, uh, and all the extended brothers and sisters in this church and all around the world. Uh, we know that you know, with the hardship of, of, of uh, COVID-19, that, that, that uh, in it was the blessing of, of being able to broadcast our services uh, and post them to anyone who may come about them uh, so that they are not just ours, but, you know, they are for everyone who needs to hear your, your message. And I ask that, as Brother Ikone said, I decrease completely, please, uh, so that your words are the ones that the people hear today uh, and that they draw closer to you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right, trust and questioning. That was my sermon today. I, you know, I, I started, I started, I made it. Uh, it was, it was so good. And uh, then I was going over it again, and it is nonsense. But, <laughs> but you, you know, you know, when you, when you preach in your own shower, you know, it's really easy to follow yourself. Uh, so if you all have any trouble following me. And, and my thoughts, please stop me in the middle, because somebody else might have, a, have some trouble, too. And I want to make sure everybody's clear on what I'm, <coughs> what I'm trying to get at here. Um, what is trust? What is trust? Trust, is, it's essentially your faith, right? What you're putting your faith in? Huh? You ever thought about it that way? It's, we, we, we use faith a lot when we're in church. We're speaking about God. Uh, you know, you want to put your faith in God. You want to put your faith in the ways of God. But what you're doing in everyday terms is you're trusting what he says. You're trusting that he is not lying to you. It's a, it's a relational thing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the word, I'm going to try to try the word trust instead of faith. Because in our everyday lives, we use the word trust a lot more. Um, you, know, you, you know, sometimes you might open the kitchen cabinet, or not the cabinet, the, uh, the kitchen cold box, and uh, you'll pull out some Tupperware, and you'll give it a sniff, and you'll say, I do not trust this. Throw it out. Right? You don't say, hearken unto this. I do not have faith in it. Right? You don't trust it. You throw it out. It's not good. So... I'm going to use trust. Trust and faith, they're, they're very synonymous. And um, I'm, going to go with, I'm going with trust here. 
so that we can kind of put it into, what, what I want to do is put it into a, a realm of your mind of your everyday speech. Because, you know, sometimes you might take a lot of the, the, the church words and you'll put them over into the church word section of your mind. And when you have to do something like preaching or telling somebody about Christ, you'll end up pulling from there in terms that, you know, some commoners, commoners, some laymen, some people that, you know, don't really read the Bible may not understand. So I'm, I'm, I'm going with trust so that hopefully it floats around in that part of your mind where you walk around every day, uh, where everybody else understands so that not only does it sit better with the people that you come in contact with, but it sits better with you because this is one of those words that you're probably more likely to use and, uh, and it'll permeate your life a little bit better. That's, that's the goal anyway. Um, you know, uh, like I said, it's a blessing to be here. Uh, you know, I really, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't deserve to be here. Uh, but you know, not, not, not here, 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 but also here on this planet at all, right? In spirit? In spirit? I am here in spirit. I, I, I am, but, uh, but I don't really deserve to be, do I? Uh, you know, if, if, well, okay, let's, let's, let's take a quick look at something. Let's take a quick look at Genesis 4, 4 through 7. We're going to go back to the beginning, but not the all the way to the beginning, you know, just, uh, just a little bit, just a little bit almost there. I'm using a, a phone, so I might get there faster than you, uh, but uh, I'm going to read it out also. Uh, and Abel, he also brought the first things of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no, not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? Uh, if thou doest well, shalt, that not, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt, and thou shalt rule over him. Uh, you know, I know I said I was going to say things in a, in a more common speak. And I'm, I'm reading from the King James Version, but I'm so used to it. It's, it's a lovely version. Um, what, uh, well, let, and, to, and to frame that, Two, to frame those verses that we just read, I want to tell you something else about me. And it's that when I read the Bible, there are some things that I like to keep in the back of my mind. Some, some facts. Uh, some, some God facts. Like, uh, let's see, I'm going, to take, I'm going to take some volunteers here. Who wants to read something? Anybody want to read something? I'm going to make people. Okay, you got <laughs> Yeah, we're, actually, I'm about, to, I'm about to do that. Let's do, can you do 1 John 4, 8 for me? I don't. This is my first time in years cleaning the church. Okay, well then. Can someone, I'll pass it. Oh. Yeah, all right. 1 John 4, 8? John 4, 8. 1 John 4, 8. Um, let's see, what else? And I need four more. There we go. We got one in the back. Uh, Ezekiel 33, 11. Our head deacon, I will give you Deuteronomy 30, 19 through, mm, yeah, 19 through 20. Um, do I got any more? Uh, let's start with those. Yeah, right. if you don't mind. First John, excuse me, 4, 8. He who does not love God does not know God, for God is love. Thank you, thank you. Magnificent. Uh, and um, yes, yes, Ezekiel 
Yeah. Yeah, 1920. Amen. Thank you. Thank you all. So those, those are my, those are, those are three of them. God is love. He that knoweth not love knoweth not God. And he, so, you know, in, in the adverse, you know, the inverse, he that knoweth love knoweth God, right? Um, Deuteronomy 33, 19 through 20, I, pay, I use that one because it demonstrates the fact that everyone has a free choice. Your will is your own will, um, and who you decide to yield that will to is up to you. So every decision made by every person in the Bible is an act of their will being exercised, whether to God's will or to someone else's, right? And uh, Ezekiel 33:11, God does not want anyone to perish, right? That's not the God we'd serve. And, you know, that makes sense with the, the first John 4, 8. If he is love and he doesn't, then he, I'm sure he doesn't want anyone to perish. But it's also your choice. It's your choice. And what you want to do is up to you. So, so those are my, my big three. I, I also, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll also do, I'll, let, me, let me add two more. Romans 6, 23, uh, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Um, so that, that just kind of tells you where, where this death is coming from um, and the fact that God wants to save you. And uh, Malachi 3, 6, um, I'm going to read that one out of here. Uh, I only paraphrased it on my sheet over here. And that is, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. These things aren't specific to any particular time. These are facts about God that have existed about God from the beginning of time and will continue through the ceaseless ages. So when I read the Bible, these are things that I use to frame the things that I read. Because if I, if I don't have it in, in context of, of these things, sometimes I might, I might do the, the injustice of God of putting it in my own terms. Um, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've noticed a lot lately, there's, there's been a, a, a resurgence, I feel like, on, on certain things in the internet where the people are trying to get back to God and figure out who God is. But a lot of the time, the big problem that they have is that they're trying to frame God in their own frame. And that's not something I want to do. Uh, because if I'm, if I'm framing God for me, uh, then, then it's, it's not who God is. That's who I am, right? So... So frame God the way God says he should be framed, because otherwise you're not, you're not, you, can't, you can't really trust the things that you're thinking about him. Because he's the one who said the things about himself, right? He said the things about himself. You can't add the things to him and, and then expect him to follow those things. Um, okay. So I, I think I, I think I, I tangent off a little bit, but that but that but that so back to the Genesis four four through seven, right? Um, man had fallen. Uh, Adam and Eve had taken up the apple, or not the apple, the fruit. Uh, had left the garden, had some kids, um, were doing sacrifice, and 
when you when you really when you look at the 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 scope of the things that had happened up to this point in Genesis 4 sin hadn't really gotten a chance to permeate the lives of the people you know uh we all know that sin gets worse and worse and worse through time, but they were starting off at, with sin point one, you know, the second they left the Garden of Eden, the planet was still good, good, very good for the most part. You know, they don't really know the suffering. Eve gave birth to a couple of kids, but I bet you she didn't scream half as much as my wife did for my one. <laughs> you know the the her body was still as close to perfect as 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 she was going to get without without god and that's that's pretty good because he had already made it perfect it only stepped down a little bit so up to this point the people of earth the heavenly hosts the angels the the other created realms that we don't even know about uh, hadn't seen the effects of sin on the planet. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, oh yeah, so, so they don't know, they don't know yet if Satan was telling the truth. Can God be trusted? Is his way really better we've had it really good for a long time but you know we don't know if it could be better you know satan satan told adam and eve to take and disobey the lord but you know things things aren't really worse for them they're just kind of different you know they're, they're not wearing the robes anymore they're not uh in his presence but we don't know how much worse that is than anything else well, it's, well, I guess we should, we just need to keep watching. Keep watching, reserve, yes, Debbie. I got a question, I don't know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. So, how can you trust anything that you don't know? Like, you know, if you're going to say something that's going backwards, but not, you know, it's things that are being said, and news media, and things are going backwards, or not going backwards. Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, let me get let me get you too. I got a couple of that. Yeah. So we we question things and we look at time, right? Yeah. It's not happening in our time. Ooh. So we don't feel like it's not gonna happen. That's true. And that gives doubt. But it's his oh, time. I like that. I like that. I like that. It's gonna come to him. And that's what like that. right. I like that. And that's a wonderful that's a wonderful input. It's his time, not our time. Yes, sir. There you go. That's when, that's when he knew. That's, that's when he, knew. The, the, he also lived to be another 930 years. Right, yeah, because his body was already created so well. He lived for such a long time because his body was created so well because, because God had already made him perfect. So, so the, the, the visible universe didn't know the ramifications of sin, really. You know, they, they had killed some animals to sacrifice. But, you know, once again, these are perfect beings doing this killing. God killed the first one so that Adam and Eve could have skins, right? As, as, as soon as they come out, came, out of the, came out of the garden. They needed something to wear so they weren't naked. God made the first sacrifice for them. And then they made the rest of the sacrifices. But, you know, this isn't, you know, this isn't, this isn't me trying to squash a bug uh, on the on the on the on the carpet, you know, messy and disgusting. This this even though the life was being taken, it was still probably a pretty clean looking thing. Uh, and then and then we get to Genesis Genesis four. Uh, Genesis four four through seven. Cain brings his sacrifice to God of the fruits that he had made. Cain probably thought that this was a good idea. 
You know, he said he thinks I worked hard for this. I want God to have part in this. And then it's not accepted uh, because it's not what God asked for. But when you read seven, let me see. When you read seven, if thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If Cain had done the right thing, right? His sacrifice would have been accepted. But, but, but think about it like this. If Cain had done the right thing past this, he would have shown that God's way wasn't necessary. And his sacrifice could have been accepted because man could have gotten through this without God. Right? Cain could have set a crazy, amazing, unbelievable point for the rest of history if he was able to continue and do right trying to offer the sacrifices that he tried to offer. But, but what happened? That wouldn't have been right, though, would it? That's why it didn't work. That's why it didn't work. It wouldn't have been right. See, the, the point of that was to illustrate the fact that if it had been right, it would have worked. If Cain's heart was in the right place that entire time, it would have worked. But it didn't. No, there, had to be of blood. there had to be shedding of blood because that's the way God said. The, 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 the wages of sin is death. Right? The, the thing, one of the things I really like about fruit is that when you eat fruit, you're not killing anything. <laughs> right? You, <laughs> you're not, you're, you're not, you're not, no, you're not killing anything. The, 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 the reason for the fruit is to, one, be for food and to spread the seed of the plant so that there's more plant. If you eat a vegetable, you have to kill that vegetable, right? You have to rip a carrot out of the ground, right? You ha you, oh, then there's no more carrot here. You have to get a new carrot. If you eat an animal, you have to take the animal's life to be able to eat it. But if you're eating fruit, there's, there's not a single... No, nothing is dying. The whole purpose of the fruit is to, is to leave the tree. There's no, there's, no, there's no pain. There's no sacrifice in fruit. But God said if, if, if he was doing well, then his sacrifice would be accepted. And not a verse later, he lets his anger take a hold of him and... He kills his brother. He murders his brother. There had been death. Like I said, there were sacrifices. But he murdered his brother. And you know, when when I when I read this, I always I always kind of kind of I think to myself, you know, when the devil left heaven, when Lucifer left heaven and became the devil, he took a third of the angels with him. And I think to myself, is that third before or after this? Because can you picture living your entire life longer than your life now for scores and then seeing your first murder? It's, it's damaging, isn't it? You would think that some of the angels would have had to turn around. This isn't right. This is nonsense. Huh? The, the, under... Under God's way, they hadn't seen a thing of the sort for their entire lives stretching back as far as eternity can stretch back. And now, not two generations later, under the way Satan wants to do it, there's a murder. You know, I, I, always, I always, you know, you gotta, you, you would think that they go back, right? It just makes sense. You made a mistake. But, and when, you, when you, and when you think about that, the fact that they, some of them didn't go back. Wow. Where is your mind? 
to think that that was okay. But, but like, like I was saying before, I don't deserve to be here because the, at that point, God was pretty much proven to be right. Sin shouldn't exist. And because of sin, the first murder happened. I'm pretty sure at that point, everybody who could see it knew that God was the right one. God was in the right. Man is sin cursed now. Uh, so he doesn't really even deserve to be here, right? There's, there's, they're man is sinkers. There's no point in having man here. So why am I still here? Spread the word. God's will. What, what was that verse that you read in 1 John 4, 8? God is love? God is love. Is, um... Ezekiel 33, 11, God is not willing that any man should perish, right? So even though we didn't deserve to be here, God had a plan in place to make sure that he could save every single one of us that he could. Every single one of us that wanted to make the choice for him have the ability to dwell with him forever. It's a blessing. But that's, you know, I've, that's taken care of early, right? So, you know, you, let's, 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 let me put it like this. You have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Matthew, Luke. I'll give you Psalms. I'll take Psalms. Psalms, Matthew, I'm going to skip Mark, Luke, John, Acts. I'll throw Romans in there because I like it. I like it a lot. And maybe Revelation, right? That, that those pretty much completely outline the law of God and the fact that he came to save you. Uh, so what's, what's the rest of it about? Same thing, right? Yeah. Same thing. The, I, w I, would, I would venture to say that the, most of the rest of it is about the, the trust that we need to build back up to understand who God is. Because here's, here's the thing. When man fell, this, the second that Adam and Eve heard God's voice, they thought he was coming to kill them. They ran and hid. Right? Because they know the wages of sin is death. So they, so they hear God coming. God's, God's going to kill us. We have to hide. Huh? They, they knew they had sinned. So they knew they were guilty. They knew they deserved death. God is coming. He must be the one that's going to dole it out. They had, God never said he was going to be the one that killed them. That's not what God said. He said the wages are, 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 are of sin or death. But he didn't say he was going to kill them. Right? Which is example by the fact that he didn't. Right? If he was going to kill him, he would have killed him. He didn't kill him. But they thought that he would. Right? Uh, look at um, Abraham. Look at, look, at, look at Abraham. Abraham, during Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, but right before it happened, from, from 50 to 10, pled with God to see, well, no, questioned God. Uh huh. Yeah, the sermon. Question God to see if it was necessary for God to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah with righteous people in the city. You know, he could have kept going to one. He 100% could have kept going to one, but he didn't. He, he knew, he started at 50 because he was hoping. But he knew that the way of Sodom and Gomorrah was one that deserved the destruction. So he started at 50. He went down to 40. He did 35. Got down to 10. But 10 weren't found. And, you know, after Lot and his family left, there wasn't anybody in there. Right? 
That's right. But, but then let's, let me, but then let's look at, let's look at Isaac. When God told Abraham he had to sacrifice Isaac, he didn't ask a question. Right? Why is that? Why is that? Was it because that he knew that he had sinned against God with Ishmael and that there was a chance that he thought that this was something that God would do in retaliation for his sin? Did he think himself guilty enough to deserve the loss of his own son? Because you think about it, he came out of Babylon. They were doing this in Babylon already. They were already sacrificing their children to false gods, which is one of the reasons it was so easy for him to take that trip and change his name. Right? And he went on this journey that God told him to, to, to take. He trusted God enough to get him out, but he didn't trust God enough to protect him on his way. He didn't trust God enough to protect him again for the same thing that God said he would have protected him for the first time. He didn't trust God enough to uh, fulfill the promise of his son that he said he would and tried to do it himself. So was, 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 he, was he under the impression that he deserved this because he thought that's who God was? I mean, when you think about it, what, what, is it, what does it say? Let's see. Um, Genesis. I'm going to go with. Oh, well, no, no, no. Let me see. I think it was 16 I was looking for. No. Genesis 22. Yeah. Genesis 22. And And what am I looking for? I'm going to talk. Somebody will find it for me. It's, uh, well, uh, there's, there's, there's the, the part in Genesis 22, I think it's 22, where God says that he is testing the faith of Abraham, right? And, we, and we, I, I said I was going to use the word trust. Right. So, so, so God needs to test the trust. Of Abraham, but but this is this is God we're talking about, isn't it? This is God we're talking about. God is all knowing, all powerful. What does God gain from this test? He already knows everything. He already knows Abraham better than Abraham knows Abraham. But Abraham even though his name has changed, he's come far, still has some incorrect beliefs about who God is. Right? If, you, if Abraham had said to God, Lord, you have promised me this child. Your will is that this child is the father of many nations. Children like the stars are supposed to come from this child, and he was given to me from you. Would that have been wrong? That would have been, that would have been true, right? But he didn't do that. He didn't do that. But, but with Sodom and Gomorrah, he was, he was fine. These people he knew deserved the destruction, but he didn't question him about this, because he... Slight conjecture, thinks that this is in the realm of the things of God. 
God needs to correct this thought in Abraham so that Abraham doesn't continue to permeate this throughout the thesis ages. Another, another one I'm going to look at. Look at, look at, uh, look at Job. We're going to look at a quick look at Job. Job 1. I'm just going to jump to it real quick. This one's at the end. You know, the devil comes to God. Quick rundown on Job for Job 1. The devil comes to God, says that he's going to tempt Job. Um, do these things to him and uh, get Job to curse God. Uh, the, he goes ahead, he does a bunch of horrible, horrible things to Job. And then what, what does Job say? Let's see. Job 121, and this is Job speaking. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God didn't take away a thing from Job. Satan did it. But Job was under the impression that this was in the realm of the things of God. And, and granted, granted, he, he, you know, he did the right thing. He didn't curse God. And... You know, he thought that God had a better plan, but he didn't know the God that he served well enough to know that this wasn't from God. Abraham didn't know God well enough to know that God was going to be 100% true to the promises that he'd already made about Isaac and not have him kill him, even though that he had sinned against God already, right? God uses a lot of the rest of these books, right? Like I said, I gave you, I gave you 10. Those had the laws. Those had the, the path to salvation. Let's say the other 56 are a guide so that you understand who God is. You need to, so that we, not you, I keep, I, I said, have I said you a lot? I feel like I shouldn't have said you. I hope I didn't say you. We. We need to make sure that we are framing God in the realm of God and not ours. We need to show the world God the way God is and not just the way we think he is. Amen. Amen. The, I, I, I don't even know where I am in this thing. I haven't looked at this thing enough. <laughs> we we should be sharing the gospel. Last week, I was excited about that. Last week, in, in uh, Brother Ikones' sermon, he sh he shared he shared the gospel. Yeah, go ahead. Oh no, him, this guy. <laughs> this guy. He shared he shared the gospel with us. The um where where am I gonna turn to? What what was that what was that what was that uh that verse that I was looking for? That this is the gospel that Christ died for us, that we may have life. Like, like, I, like I said, I wasn't paying attention close enough to this thing, so I, I, I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. We're jumping around. But that's the gospel, right? That God died for us. That's, that's exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Well, that, that was, that was, that was the, the, the ram that ended up, um, yeah, uh, ended up in the thicket that was the sacrifice for the rest, for, for, um, for, the, uh, for the experience, right? Because, like, like we said, huh? Oh, do I really? Are you serious? Oh, God, God. But Abraham, That's exactly what he did. 
That's exactly what he did. I was, uh, I was on the gospel. Yes, thank, thank you. The, uh, I was on the gospel. The gospel is that, that Christ died for us. And then, but what does that mean to us? Well, well, let's, let's take this also. Uh, greater love hath no man than this, than he laid down his life for his friends. Okay, so the love of God is, is part of the gospel. The love of God is the gospel because the greatest love that a man can do is the thing that God did for us so that we could have eternal life. So how are we walking around? Are we walking around with our lives in such a way that we show the love of God? We all know the gospel, but are we letting the heart of the gospel, the love of God, permeate our extreme existence? Is, is the love of God our focus? I was, I was, I was writing, writing, yeah, writing this sermon. Technically, the, I had, I had an idea for the first sermon that I was going to write. And like I said, uh, Brother Bartholomew took it. With, with, his, with his sermon on the love of God. But I was so excited about that when I heard it because I was like, man, that ties in perfectly. And we're both doing our first sermons the, the same month, so it's great. And then, and then Brother Yacones had his, and it's like, man, that ties in perfectly too. But the, the love of God that we that we need to be showing should make, we should make sure that we are showing the, I'm running low on time and I'm trying to, I'm trying to condense as much as I can. <laughs> I think I'm only halfway through the first page. <laughs> we need to make sure that we're showing the, the love of the real God. Make sure that we're showing the God who that we can trust. The, N not the God that we think he is, but the God who he is. Amen. Amen. Our Savior, our love, the, the commandments of God, the promises have, have blessings on them. The promises of God uh, come true. The word of God is consistent. The acts of God are consistent. The desires of God are consistent. All so that we know that we can trust God. Right? He's not flighty. He's, he's not going to change. And that is why throughout the Bible, you know, these other 56 books... We, we have the example of people living their lives with him and without him, and it's consistently the same. But trust doesn't come on its own, right? That's why, that's why the books are there. Trust doesn't come on its own. You have to build trust. And that's, that's kind of where the questioning was going to come in. Because when you look into the Bible, you're reading it, there isn't a single person in the Bible who rightly questioned God and didn't get an answer. I'm not, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying a prayer. I'm saying, I'm saying, take Moses. God, I don't think I can do this. Um... God said, I will, I will give you the strength to do this. And he gave him the strength to do it, right? Uh, jo oh, I love, the, my, my mother was the, was the uh, uh, children's story speaker today. She did a, a great sermon on Jonah. And I feel like something that we, I, I, was, I, didn't, I don't think I learned this until I was like 29. 
about Jonah, you know, sometimes you think, you read, you ever read something in the Bible and it's like, have I ever even read the Bible? How did I miss this? Huh? The reason Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh was because he had so much faith in God that God was going to save those people and he didn't want them saved. He said, like, I don't want to go. I don't want them saved. I don't like them. So I'm, I'm going the opposite way. He trusted God so much to save those people that he thought for his own purposes, it's better that he didn't do it, right? And then, and then he's, he's, if, I, if, I get, if anybody gives me the chance to have a, another sermon, it, he would be part of a series that I was thinking of working on called, uh, <laughs> called the, the Biblical Dummies. And uh, <laughs> now streaming. You know, Job was going to be the smartest dummy, in the Bible because he didn't have the correct picture of God, but he didn't curse him. And then Jonah was going to be my dumbest smarty because he knew who God was and he, he just tried to do things his own way. He had, he, had, he had it down that God would save these people and he just didn't want to do it because he didn't like them. You see, the... The trust that we need to build in the Lord isn't something that we should just have blindly. You know, these, it's evidence of things unseen, not because we, and we don't trust in these things, not because we can't see them, but because God has been so consistent with the things that we did see, right? God has been true to everything that he said that he was going to do. And if you don't understand it, you ask him a question, he'll give you an answer. He'll answer you so that you know who he is and that, so that you know you can trust in him and if you know that you can trust him, you know that he wants what's best for you, and you can put your life in his hands. Amen. Like I said, I'm running low on time, but oh, I'm running, I'm running, yeah, I'm running perfectly low on time. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say some words. We. Luke, Luke, let me see if I can use this. I put this at the end, and I hadn't, and I hadn't had a plan for it. So, but since, I'm, since I'm, I'm, near, I'm near the end, let's, let's, take, let's take this for the ending. Luke 12, 48 says, but he, is that what I wanted? Oh, yeah, okay. But he that knew not and did not commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. I kind of just want the middle part in there. Because we have a large responsibility as people that claim God in our lives, to make sure that we show the correct God. Like I said, God, God in Job spends pretty much the last half of Job yelling at Job and his friends because they got it so wrong. Uh, three of his friends. One of them got it right. Elihu. It's a good baby name. Elihu. But uh, if, if we, we don't want to go out and show an incorrect picture of who the Lord is. And we can avoid that by making sure we trust the God that God is and not the God that we think he is. And we can figure out who he is 
by asking him to show us. Because he wants us to know who he is. 